Hi, thanks very much for joining the distributed tracing and deploys talk. Um, this is the session where we'll be talking about how to use distributed traces to ship quickly and confidently. Uh, this is a really short uh, presentation. Uh, it's gonna be mostly a demo, but we have a couple slides that are just gonna set things up and introduce the concept to few people. Um, at the very end, um, in addition to being recorded, there'll also be some time uh, to answer questions. So uh, just by way of introduction, my name is Clay Smith. I'm a partner engineer at Lightstep. have been working with uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment for a long time. It's a topic I'm passionate about and excited to kind of talk to you today about how distributed traces fit into deploying software. Um, by way of introduction for Lightstep, the company I work for, um, one slide and two images we like to show people a lot are the difference between maybe the public or popular perception of modern software and how it actually works um, for practitioners and people that are um, kind of deep into actually building complicated systems. Uh, we know from experience that unfortunately, uh, the reality is much closer to the image on the right side there. Um, and Lightstep in particular, um, we're a software company that really um, hopes to help um, SREs and platform engineers um, work in, optimize, and debug software that's in that environment. Um, and ideally in doing so, um, we can help people build software uh, more quickly and more reliably. And so, um, with that, um, obviously observability comes up and there's been a lot of marketing around observability and kind of what that means. And there's a lot of different ways to look at it, including the Wikipedia definition, which comes from control theory, but uh, a really simple and straightforward way to look at it too, or think of it is what caused that change. And this becomes especially interesting with service deployments, making changes in code and deploying those changes because that's an intentional change that hopefully goes well, but we know from experience that's not always the case. But uh, with complicated systems and distributed systems in particular, getting to the root cause of a deploy um, went out, um, what break or what's what broke or what's causing that uh, regression uh, can be really tricky. And so the demo and the talk today is gonna be going deeper into that use case in particular. And we know um, from surveys and talking to a lot of people that, um, you know, the, the story behind what caused that change after you send out uh, code change to production isn't always perfect. Um, polls and surveys have shown that uh, this process is more often than not uh, can be feared by people and it's often slow and sometimes fragile. And beyond all of that, particularly with, um, you know, distributed systems and teams and different services with different owners, um, the coordination uh, in a large organization to kind of figure out um, who broke what uh, can be really complicated by itself. Um, so we think uh, there's obviously a better way to do that. And that's kind of the purpose of this quick session today is getting into that. Um, so we've set up a demo environment that we'll be going into shortly of a project in GitLab. Um, it's a, um, a Docker-based microservice environment in a mono repo. Um, we set up a GitLab CICD pipeline to deploy that to a Kubernetes cluster. In this case, it's in Google Cloud using GitLab's managed Kubernetes environment. And then we've connected that to Lightstep to actually understand what's happening during each deployment and how to understand those changes. And the idea here is all of these together, um, when you're using all of them, uh, you can uh, get back to uh, the code and fix problems uh, faster and more quickly. And so we'll be showing that shortly. So I'm going to switch over to a demo to kind of show this in action. I'm gonna stop, stop my screen share right now and we'll switch windows. All right, so we're back in the demo environment and we pulled up the hipster shop um, repository here in uh, GitLab. Um, so this is the microservice um, repository I was talking about earlier. It's based on a um, pretty popular demo environment for Google. Um, but the idea here, we can see in the service diagram, we've got about eight or nine different services that's powering a um, customer experience. In this case, it's an e-commerce app that sells um, products for hipsters. Um, there's nothing uh, too unusual about this, but there's two things we've done uh, in this environment uh, that I need to call out before we kind of jump into the observability piece. 
Um, the first thing is that all of these different services have been instrumented and they emit telemetry, in particular traces. And we're gonna use those traces to kind of get to root cause analysis and understand what changed during deploys. The other thing, in addition to having uh, telemetry and generating traces, is that for each of these services, we've actually made a change in the pipeline. Um, here is um, a configuration file for Scaffold, which is a tool that manages Kubernetes deploys, that manages Kubernetes, de Kubernetes deploys. Uh, but what we've done here is actually injects the version from the GitLab environment variable um, into the um, instrumentation code. So when we're running these services in production and those services are emitting telemetry that gets collected and uh, analyzed by Lightstep, we know exactly what version was running uh, when we observed those changes. Um, so this is uh, somewhat of a, a technical note, but just uh, need to call it out that this uh, really enables the full end-to-end -end workflow. We're able to go from code to the telemetry data we see in Lightstep because we've, um, we've added this tag. So just quick note and uh, different ways to do this. There's some more documentation on the Lightstep site, but this is just an important note of what ties it all together. So um, through the GitLab um, continuous deployment pipeline, uh, we've deployed to our Kubernetes cluster running in Google Cloud. Here it is, you can buy various uh, hipster products. And in this case, let's say that we've started to get some customer complaints in the morning after uh, we know we've made some changes. So um, as I said earlier, the uh, key question is, well, uh, what caused that change? What's actually causing the slowness that's causing customer complaints? And so uh, at this point, um, there's historically been various ways to do that, but I'm gonna show uh, what it looks like in Lightstep. In particular, the, um, the service uh, directory page of Lightstep. And so this will look familiar if you used uh, metrics dashboards before, but there's a couple important differences I wanted to highlight too. Um, first of all, you see all of your services. So far, so good. These are all the microservices in the environment. And in the middle of the page here, we see key operations on that service. So latency, errors, um, operations per second. Because the complaint was around slowness, the idea here is, well, looking at latency, what got slow and when? Because we've tagged or instrumented the code in that environment to include the version number, we have these version tags appear. And what this means is it's the first time that Lightstep saw that tag um, in the production environment. And so what it does, though, is it makes it really easy to see the before and after of a change for that service. So in this case, this already looks super suspicious. In the inventory service, in the update inventory operation, so here's a call that's happening in the inventory service. After this deploy, version 1.14.187, latency jumped from a few hundred milliseconds to over a second. So if we click on that, we can compare it to one hour prior, we can have a before and after picture of what happened during that change. And what we just did there in a single click is set up a baseline window right here in blue with a regression window right here in yellow. So we want to understand why it's so much slower in yellow versus blue. And we're going to go through this page and kind of drill down. So immediately we see the, the histogram of latency on the right hand side in yellow. It's a lot slower in blue. It's a lot faster. So what actually changed? Because we're collecting tags with every request through these services, uh, we are able to bubble up um, almost immediately. So what's in the baseline or what's, what's in the regression? And a couple uh, things immediately stick out. One, the version is different. So in the regression, version 1.14.187, it got slower. But also, this is kind of interesting, there's a tag that says large batch equals true. So this is kind of indicating that some code changes behind this and it's not CPU, memory, or like resource exhaustion. So by clicking on that, we're gonna kind of narrow our field of focus. We then can see uh, the service diagram. Let's see all services. And something immediately uh, kind of stands out here. In the inventory service, when it writes the cache, we see in um, yellow here, there's a lot of latency contributing to that. In addition, we study the, all the, uh, the upstream services, the web app, the Android app, the iOS app, so we know it's also having customer facing impact. If we go ahead and click in on the inventory service, we're then gonna get a, go ahead and just narrow down into the right cache operation on it. And we're gonna actually see correlated logs. So again, baseline in blue, regression in yellow. 
right here, we see that in the regression, it's writing the cache between 1,300 and 13,000 items. And that's not happening in the baseline window. So we've gone all the way from seeing the latency spike here, understanding the service, the version, and then lastly, going all the way down to the operation. So in a few clicks, we've gone from things seem slow, customers are complaining to the individual uh, correlated log, log lines that indicate that this is a code change related to the cache write operation. And then in doing so, this is more than enough operation to open a JIRA ticket or open a bug report, roll back the change and go back to your GitLab project, see what happened in that version and make the appropriate change. So that's the entire workflow. And at this point, uh, we'll go back to um, the demo deck here and uh, answer some few questions and uh, happy to answer those and get into more detail. Thanks very much.